السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. Uh, how's everybody? We are starting our talk tonight about the bubble and the cold man. We delivered it yesterday in Arabic and this nickname was Al Fankush. Today we are talking about the bubble and the cold man. What is the bubble? We have been living here in the West for the last nearly 35-37 years. We have been seeing and witnessing and experiencing different schools of thought, especially Islamic ones. And most of them who came from different villages and different countries and reduce the religion into the bubble that you can see it and let the community to live inside the bubble. And this is the problem with the bubble, the mentality of the individuals who are running this kind of social or religious activities in the West. And when we look at the philosophy of the bubble itself, we find that the fiqh, jurisprudence that we are having to witness in a country like that, or in the West, or even in Muslim majority countries, became more politicized than being religious diversity. The politicization of religion is what led the community to live inside such a bubble and to divide, to divide the community. Called ourselves names, different names, different schools of thoughts, different scholars, but such scholars who divide and promote themselves and only promote their schools of thoughts are the divisive element of any community and they are the ignorant ones. This is the meaning of the bubbles that we are living nowadays. We need the community to stuck inside it actually and they cannot get out of our understanding, limited understanding of our religion. What is the cold man? We know some of these faces from the west or from the east, all of them are representing con man. Vector sold or was trying to sell Eiffel Tower 1925 to a group of people, convincing them, trying to convince them that it will become a scrap. Of course, we know, uh, what's his name? Leonardo, Leonardo. DiCaprio is the wolf of Wall Street and how was trying to con people in different areas. Here, these two actors from a movie in Egypt called The Green Adaba Square, he was selling the square to this individual coming from the south of Egypt. And here is a different advancement of creating a new product which did not exist in another movie called Al Fankouche, where the con man was conning the whole country by selling a product which does not exist in the country. But the supreme one amongst them who changed it from just one man show into an organization, an institution to sell nothing for the people. The conning process of those people is to sell a product which does not exist. To sell a terminology which nobody understands. But the community will flow, will follow the flow blindly like a flock of sheep. And this is what we can put it forward to what we have seen nowadays, or we have been seeing nowadays, of what we follow, counter-terrorism activities, without understanding what terrorism and who started terrorism, and who is behind terrorism, who created terrorism, and, 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 and. And this is the problem with us of following con men. Next one, please. Coming back to our talk tonight about Renaissance and fall. If we follow the philosophy of the con man, of the con man, or the con men, we will produce this fankush, huh, which did not exist, in the community, but it's a product sold by media, 
huh? by journalism, by any kind of media, to convince people that does exist. So people will rush to buy it. But if we follow the reasoning of building our sites and our community, we'll be able to create the re re renaissance of our uh, uh, country and do not follow the fall of our country and become a backward society. The most important element of this is the youth element. The youth is the most important element in any community, whether it's the east or west, north and south, anywhere and everywhere. So youth nowadays become laid back, especially, not especially, either in the east or in the west. And the divorce rate become higher than it was before. Because we became more complacent, more economically empowered, especially in the West, and easy to get married and easy to get divorced. We became more irresponsible as youth. And the rate of divorce per thousand is increasing. As you can see it nowadays, whether in Muslim majority countries or even in the West. Because of, because of independence, or because of differences, or because of inability and lack of responsibility among the male and female. If I can see the other one, please. You can look at here, uh, this is uh, the countries in the West. It goes from 68 per thousand in Portugal to 13 per thousand in Ireland, and it goes to Czech Republic, 66. Spain 61 per thousand, Cuba, France, and USA in the 50s. But why in the Muslim majority like Kuwait is 42, 42 per thousand? In Egypt is 40 per thousand, in Lebanon is 37 per thousand. It is going up because of the inability of the people to become responsible to build a family. I'm focusing on the youth and the marriage as a cornerstone of building our society because they are the majority in our society. The second, if I can go back to the first slide, please. This will create, if we have a successful marriage, will create the mother who really will be the cornerstone of building any community inside a family. Inside a family. Now we have seen a lot of cases of what we call single mother. Single mother, and thousand and thousand and thousand and thousand. And some of the difficulties of these issues is the lack of the irresponsible behavior of male or female before getting married. They don't want to get married. And some youth if I get give some examples here in, 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 in UK or in other countries, every year there's about thirteen to 14,000 or more young girls and, and maybe fewer men are coming from the East for arranged marriages or for immigration. Every year, which creates a lot of problems. The young man here thinks that when he go to his original country or the homeland of his parents and bring a young female, she would be obedient to him. But the life does not go on for a long time and divorce will happen. So if I talk about these two as the cornerstone of any society, if the motherhood within a community, within the family, can bring the community. A family, a family made of a father and a mother and children. So we'll be able to build through that the community. This is the first successful story we'll be able to will let us to be able to build our society and build our civilization. The second most important point is education. Education in certain countries was in the good old days based on seeking knowledge. Seeking knowledge, which is very broad and very wide. Upbringing, which is the quality and the character of the behavior of the teacher. 
and the respect of the students or the pupils to the teacher himself or herself. Then the literacy process. Now most of the educational system now is based only on education, not on knowledge or on upbringing. And if we go back to the uh, certain countries when I, when I, where I came from, like uh, Egypt or other countries, the, the, the ministry used to call the ministry of knowledge before. Then became the ministry, ministry of education and the upbringing, then becomes the ministry of education. Nowadays, the respect and the lack of respect to the teacher become a very vital in being able to bring a good generation to seek the knowledge to become highly educated. And if we go to look at some of the statistics in certain countries, if you go to this all Middle Eastern countries and the Arabian Peninsula, the literacy rate, the illiteracy rate in these countries goes from 40, nearly 48 percent here. In Mauritania, in Egypt, 24%, in Sudan, 24%. Uh, the best, one of the best is uh, Palestine, is 3.3%, uh, Germany, 30% illiteracy rate. This is one of the things which actually we need to invest more money on education and knowledge and upbringing of the young pupils and students. Whether well, this is actually in uh, in the east or in the west. And most of you know the situation in Malaysia, how they spend about 20% of their budget uh, over the last, over more than 20 years during the uh, ruling of Prime Minister Mahathir Mohammed to get uh, 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 Malaysia from uh, one of the most backward countries in Southeast Asia into one of the nine tigers. This is the rate in Pakistan between uh, 1951 to 2009 and you find actually there's an illiteracy of 31% of the country. 31% illiteracy in Pakistan. And you can see the difference uh, in uh, uh, less female, 55% here, illiteracy and 31 in uh, uh, the male. Okay, next please. This is in Bangladesh, the literacy rate is about uh, 50, uh, 47 or 46 percent literacy rate in 2013. So if we talk about the family and the education system in any country, these are the cornerstone of building, come back to the first original uh, slide, please. If we talk about the family composition, at the first unit of society, unity, and to build the country, and the education system is the second one to be investing in. We have to invest in building a uh, community in the uh, family itself. Then we have to invest in education, upbringing, and knowledge. Once we establish these two pillars, such individuals, youngsters, will be able to realize, become aware, and advocate. Without the knowledge, and the good upbringing in school and at home, and the good education system, such youngsters will not be able to realize that what's happening in the surrounding. Realization is the first step of advocacy and support. Realization is the first step of advocacy, but realization has to come after this process inside this safe atmosphere. To realize what's going in the surrounding, to be aware of it, then to stand up and advocate for it. Advocacy in Islam is something which is mentioned in the Quran three times. In the Holy Quran, one of it is in Surah Ma'un, right? And then you can do Have you seen the one who denies the Day of Judgment? Who is this? One who denies the Day of Judgment is the one who treats orphans badly, that's one, and the one who does not advocate for the needy, and the code of the needy. So here's the word advocacy, based on realization and awareness, of bringing education and knowledge, goes as a systematic, in a unit, which is a good and stable unit, to build the civilization, and the, to, to build up the re renaissance of this country or this society.
So advocacy is heavily mentioned in the Quran, they mentioned there, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not mention into it whether to treat badly the Muslim orphan or the Muslim orphan or to advocate for the Muslim needy or the non-Muslim needy. But because, go back to the first one, please. Because we go to our school of thoughts, which is politicizing our religion, we bought all this kind of broad understanding of the knowledge of Islam into this problem. Because we don't have the same scholars, like Imam Shafi'i was saying, in the good old days, my opinion is wrong and could be right, but my colleague's opinion is right but could be wrong. See, this is the ulama, not the people who are in the mosque now saying don't go to this mosque because this is X school of thought and this mosque is X school of thought and this mosque is X school of thought and this group is X school. This is wrong. And these are the, the, the ignorant ulama which are dividing the ummah and actually uh, uh, separating between us. So here I said this is the second or third step after the motherhood and the building the, 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 the family unit is goes to advocacy. Once the youngsters will be able to realize, be aware, and stand up to advocate, he or she will be able to take initiatives. Once they'll be able to take initiatives, they'll be able to organize themselves, their work, to make it more organized and to build a small organization. Smaller organizations, but we need every group of youngsters to build organizations, to take initiatives. Don't stop doing that. Don't sit still at home. Don't sit idle watching television or playing on social media 24-7. Just take any initiative with any of your friends and colleagues in the locality, in the neighborhood, organize your work and start to build your organization to start to build a society. Once we'll be able to build a civil society in our country, we'll be able to go for the civilized level and the advancement and development of our country. But if we fail to do that from the very beginning, we go to the con man policy who produce a non-existing product and sell it like hot air for people like in the good old days when I was a young kid, we used to know or to say something like, uh, I can sell you a hot, a hot air bottle. And a bottle is full of air. And I convince you that this bottle is full of air, which is very valuable air, and you buy it. I can con you. Or I can tell you that I can, I have the ability to spray air and keep the color of air red or white or blue or green or black because I have the magic spray in my hand and you follow me blindly like you follow me blindly because I am the con man or I am the one who successfully managed to uh, make the fish to sweat in the middle of the sea you see this con man if we don't build our society this way, we'll fall on the conman policy, which created a non-existing product and selling it to us like what we see nowadays, something called terrorism. Nobody knows even what is the uh, definition of such terminology. People killed, people deported, people got hostage, people taken hostage or put in prison for a, a, a something which nobody knows what it is. This is the big fan kush of the conman of this Essentially, once we build our civil society strongly, based, based on the good upbringing, education, knowledge, realization, awareness, and advocacy, taking initiative by the youngsters, organizing their, them, their, them, themselves, building organization, building society, we have to build a very strong endowment scheme on the local level, on the national level, and on the global level. Strong endowment scheme, which we call it in Arabic, waqf. Without such strong endowment scheme, this process cannot become stable. 
And this should complement the role taken by the private sector and the role taken by the government itself. So one of the things happening in the East is most of these trusts and properties and the assets being taken by the government to create something the government of endowment or the government of waqf. Some of, sorry, no, the, government, the, the ministry of waqf and the ministry of endowments. For, from my little experience in different countries in the East, these such ministries are the most corrupt, most backward, and uh, uh, ministries uh, and unfortunately, this that most of the people, the Muslims in the East especially, don't build the endowment in their own homelands and start to register in different countries to have their assets being registered in uh, Europe or in America. So if a good stronger endowment scheme, what? What to build this from the day one to protect the civil society from the building. Because the civil society uh, and its organization is the foundation of the creation of the whole country and the creation of civilization in such a country and the producer of quality leadership, the producer of new initiatives, advancement of technology and science and everything without such protection of the individual because they will lead to having freedom and establish the parliamentary world which is why should you have a parliament is based on the choice of one man in a country and not actually proper election and freedom of people to uh, select their own country justice, freedom, and parliamentary work. This goes together. Please, good. The independence of civil society organization based on the strength of the endowment or the work in the countries. So this will lead to what we can see nowadays, the freedom and justice in this area. If we are following this model, we will not fall in the trap of the con man which produce for us an, a sellable product which does not exist, but instead will build and cement our society and make it a very strong society. Sometimes such people, if the con man and his policy, whether it was Marlon Brando or uh, DiCaprio or Adil Imam or uh, this vector who sold the IFA, uh, Eiffel Tower or Ismail Yassin, Ahmad Nazar, Adil Imam, whatever it is. If we follow their policy, the con man policy, who creating this product which is sold to us as terrorism, we will start looking at the legend and disfigure the names. Change our legend. Bring new legend, which nobody knows about it. Change or rewrite the history. Demolish the existing civilization. But we will, if we build our stronger civil society with its independent organization, we will be able to protect our religion, history, and civilization. The choice is us, either the common policy or the strong family unit and this system to bring up our youth and organizations and stabilize the system in the country. So once we look at this legend, because every day now, the new legend is coming out. Who is he and who is she? We don't know. What are the parameters of such a legendary? What are they? What have they done? And the parameter keep changing, 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 and the value the moral value of the choice of such legend is become less than it was before in the good old days. Independence here and the endowment will give us a free press, media, and high quality literacy and literature. Okay? Command policy, 
get, will get us the lying journalist, the cheap journalist, and the fake media, and literature, or which does not belong to the country, which we don't know where it came from. Depends on who is controlling or who is safeguarding such country. Whether the very well-established institution, independent institution based on education and knowledge, or the con man policy who is producing for us the fankush. Fankush for me is a product which does not exist, could be anything. Culture, this will affect culture, art, creativity. Even when nowadays you look at the new hobbies, the competition, which actually the new competition being created by many people to try to distract and try to uh, to distract and try to uh, absorb the energy of the young people. So, in this discussion today, we need to look at our responsibility as the young people from the very beginning. Are we responsible enough to build a family unit? Are we responsible enough to build the community? Are we responsible enough actually to upbring our children in a nice way, whether in the school or outside? Are we strong enough to take initiatives, to build organization, to build civil society, which will lead to building this uh, uh, civilization and this advanced technology in our countries? Why I'm saying this nowadays? Because of the confusion. It's affecting most of the people, whether in this country, or in different countries. Because what they have been seeing, what they have been listening to, what they have been misguided by, whether it comes from religious institution, political institution, social institution, educational institution, whatever you call it. Stick to make yourself busy as a young man and young woman. Keep yourself busy by taking an initiative and building organization to serve the community. We need and we must serve our country. We need and we must serve our community. We need and we must serve humanity. But don't sit still doing nothing and waste your resources and your time and be responsible. Be responsible to build the family unit and to look after the whole community and advocate for the rights of the people and don't ever lose your freedom. Freedom is a life for the man and the woman. Somebody takes your freedom from you, that means that somebody takes your, that, your, your life from you. I conclude by saying thank you very much. And it might have been a little bit different, uh, difficult. Can you just come to the first slide, please? Okay, get out of the ghettos. Get out of the balloon which some of our leaders and whether political or social or religious leaders put us into it. Okay? Second one, please. Don't be con by an institution of con men or the individuals who are selling you products that does not exist in your society. They fool the fool. They don't fool the people who are not fooled. Whether this man who sold Eiffel Tower, or this man which you know his story, uh, the wolf of Wall Street, or these people in the Middle East who are selling something which does not exist, and did not exist, and will not exist. We have the choice, and we must make the choice. Thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.